today we'll be looking at AJA FS4 frame synchronizers with Skyhoy panels. And the FS4 is a four channel frame synchronizer for HD, 2K or SD signals, or you can also use it for 4K and Ultra HD. Now, um, it does up, down and cross conversion, but most importantly for Skyhoy panels is of course the fact that you can color correct the signal. And to do that, we'll um, show you how a Rackfly Uno panel can control the FS4. So the Rackfly Uno is another rack mounted device, or it can sit on your table if you want, it's up to you. And you may think it just has buttons. And that's true, it has 24 buttons, which are RGB backlit and they have awesome crisp OLED displays with, um, you know, it's graphical display, so you can show not just values, but also, you know, icons and states and all stuff, uh, all such things. And these displays can work as labels for the buttons as you might, you know, um, figure out. But the cool thing is that they are four-way buttons, meaning that they can also act as encoders. And for adjusting values, that's really, really helpful because then you can press the right or the left edge of a button and it will adjust the value up and down and you can see the value change in the display. So I, um, I'm looking forward to showing you that in this video. So let's dive into it and see how the Ragfly Uno can work with the FS4 frame synchronizer. So on the table I have the FrameSync FS4, I have a Ragfly Uno, this little panel, powered over Ethernet single cable solution. It's very um, shallow in its uh, uh, height, so even though it's a rack unit, you can really have it standing on a table, no problem at all. Then we have a camera as a source, we have a target uh, flower over there, we have a monitor so I can see what I'm doing, and my Mac is recording the web interface of the frame sync. So if we take a clo closer look at the panel, you can see the panel in its, its, its full uh, width right here. And I'll now zoom in on each section so you can see what's happening. So let me see if I can get as close as you want, like that. And let's start with the menu section over here. So in the menu section, I basically pick which parameter I want to, or set of parameters I want to change. You can see the displays again nicely tells us that this will give us access to color parameters, program parameters, here legalizer scaling, input plus format, audio and presets. And then on this selector, we can change between the uh, four different inputs. Now, here's a little feature that will show you why these LED bars can be pretty cool. Right now, uh, if I go to uh, one, you see that this LED is lit. When I go to two, the one in the middle, and three, it's the one to the right. When I'm at four, it's just uh, lit, and then when I'm at zero, it's off. But these LED bars can be quite cool to demonstrate different levels, basically. Um, and in this case, it has been set up to, to do just that. Then we have a shift key, and the shift key will sometimes give me access to further settings. I'll show that. So let's look at um, the, the program settings. So if we look at what we have in each section of the panel, you can see uh, with, uh, I will just change back to video source number one, which is the one that we see in the web interface. And I'll go to the color section. You can see program enable on off. Um, it is currently set to off. And uh, if we want to work with the, um, let me see. We can take the program section right here. So if I press on, on this button, we have it on. Um, and now we have access to, to these parameters. So you can see as I'm holding the, uh, pressing the edges of this four-way button, I'm actually adjusting a parameter in, in the program. And this is a very powerful demonstration of how four-way buttons really makes encoders, um, well, not useless, but they are not as critical as they used to be. So even though you have a panel with 24 buttons, you can still assign each button to be just like an encoder to adjust values up and down. Really exciting technology we have right there. And uh, that's so useful, as you can uh, easily see from this demonstration, where we have gain, black, and, and hue adjusted like that. So if we uh, move over to the other sections, you can see in this section, we have uh, some of the color parameters and I'll just enable it. Oh, I need to press on the side there. Uh, this could probably not ne necessarily need a, a press on the left edge. We could assign that button to just do it when I, I press it. But 
obviously it hasn't in this configuration. And then again, we now have, uh, and it's nicely color coded again, red, green, and blue gain, red, green, and blue black, red, green, and blue gamma right here. And these parameters, again, if, if I'm just scrolling in the web interface a little bit, you can see the, the, the red gain is adjusted with this knob, the black uh, levels are adjusted with this one. And uh, obviously, uh, if I if I use this knob, then we're adjusting the red gamma. I think you get the point right there. So let's go to another menu on the panel and, and let's take a look at the um, legalizer uh, ROI scaling features. So when we take a closer look at, at these, you'll see we have equipped the panel with uh, white, black, chroma, legalizer. Uh, this, this is where we change which type of legalizer you have, if it's off, if it's uh, YUV, if it's RGB. Um, and, and again, it's a four-way button that will give us a nice access to um, going forth and back in these settings. If we go to uh, this section, we have um, the scaler uh, turned on, so we can turn the scaler on and off right there. And uh, if we turn it on, we can change these parameters by again holding down this button. So if we want to see this in the web interface, let's go to the scaling section, and we can see that I'm now um, scaling the vertical uh, position. Yes, if I go over here, we have access to uh, the region of interest features and um, uh, we can, as you can see, uh, this button is simply assigned to be a region of interest full uh, on and off. And if I press this button on the side, you can see I'm going forth and back between the various options that's available. So this is like a shortcut to just full off, full off. And if you want to have one of the other modes, square or setup, you have it uh, using this four-way button. And there you have all the parameters, left, right, top button, and so on. If we go to the input section, I, I now press the input menu right here. We see that we have frame rate setting, general log, um, uh, what is this, uh, 2K cropping, H HDMI, RGB stuff, actually settings I'm not too familiar with. Um, at this point, test pattern, on off, Let's try that one. So we have test pattern. Then we can have different types of test patterns um, configured by this button. And uh, of course, we have a freeze function here. And then again, the <laughs> uh, I don't know if the fan speed. So we can actually turn fan speed on and off. Exciting technology. And then finally, over in this section, uh, we have access to setting the input for the frame synchronizer. So the next section is about the presets and there we will be using the shift key to access more presets than would otherwise be possible. So um, let's just quickly go to the menu section right here and uh, we select audio and presets. And then you see in the far section over here, we have mapped down audio related features. And then we have two sections concerned with presets. So one through six, seven through 12, and then now I'm holding down the shift key. You see that the displays will tell you now we have access to presets beyond 12. So 13 to 18 and then 19 and up to 23. And then we have access to the factory preset on the last button. So that was the FrameSync FS4 controlled by a Rackfly Uno. A great Skahoy panel. It will fit nicely into your OB van. And not only does it access all four channels of the frame synchronizer, it will also control more than, than just one frame synchronizer. You could actually um, at least connect to four of them, I think even eight. So this panel could really give access to, um, in, a, in such a compact form factor, you can have access to um, a lot of color correction on, on uh, frame synchronizers in your truck or in your studio facility. And one thing that's really neat is that it is removed far away from the noisy uh, equipment, which can now go into the server room. And you have it all in one panel instead of having three uh, or four tabs open in web browsers to access all these features. If you haven't seen it already, take a look at the video where I show how the RCP panel can also control the frame synchronizer. And the reason is it all runs Unisketch, which is our operating system that um, are built into every single panel. And it means that by configuration, we can access features on 
rack panels as well as RCP panels. As long as we support the device, you can have it on any of our controllers. Let's get this.